Listening to Good Morning Scotland today with Lucy and Laura. Let's return to the latest news on the UK government's efforts to undo the damage inflicted by last week's tax-cutting mini-budget. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor have confirmed they'll hold a summit later today with the head of the Office of Budget Responsibility. The decision not to release the OBR's forecast on the economic impact of Quasi Quarteng's reforms has been widely blamed for the panic that gripped the markets. So will bringing in the bean counter convince them to reconsider. The Secretary of State for Scotland is Alistair Jack and he is on the line with us now. Good morning to you, Mr Jack. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Laura. Is there an acceptance that a mistake might have been made, as it were, to, to fly blind and launch this mini-budget without releasing the OBR's assessment? Well, the OBR had draft assessments which they were preparing for no the November statement and... As you've said correctly, it, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are meeting them today. We will still expect them to come forward with a, uh, a full assessment for, for the November budget. But in the meantime, what we're trying to do is we're trying to progress with a growth strategy. That's what is important to uh, our economy. It, we can't tax our way to, to growth. No one's ever been able to do that. We're trying to create a growth strategy to help us with the challenges we face. We know that an extra 1% of growth brings an extra £47 billion pounds a, year, a year of tax into the economy. And that's what this strategy is about. This is the first step. And, um, you know, the, we're going to hold firm with the strategy because we, we, we believe it's the right one. You, you're going to hold firm. So the OBR publicly confirmed yesterday that it sent the Chancellor a forecast when he took office in September and also offered to update it in line with any planned government announcements, but it was not commissioned to do so. Was that the right decision to do that? Because well, that decision it, well, has it, well, had well, huge consequences for the financial yes, well, markets. But, 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 it, but it, 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 was, it was a few months to update it, not a few days. I, I, was, I would say to you that during the summer, the Prime Minister during the leadership election said that she would uh, both create a growth economy and deal with energy prices. Now, the economy has actually grown. It grew days, by 0.2% no, 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 in the three no, months to June. No, well, let me finish. Within six, within six working days of being Prime Minister, I'm taking into account, obviously, Her Majesty's mourning period when I make that remark, but within six working days of being Prime Minister, she brought forward a huge support mechanism for people's energy prices, for businesses' energy prices, a bigger support mechanism than we saw during COVID with furlough, which supported 900,000 jobs across Scotland. So she acted, as I say, within six working days and brought this forward. There, isn't, there wasn't the space to wait for... Um, reports to be prepared and be done. We were wanting to get on and help people with their energy prices as, they, as, as we see winter coming. But she also announced that the way that they were going to, you were going to do that was by making huge tax cuts. This announcement came as a massive shock. The pound fail is in crisis. The International Monetary Fund and the Bank of England have had to step in. The bank buying those bonds to prevent the collapse of some pension funds this week Interest rates are up half a percent. They're predicted to go up further. Hundreds of mortgage products are being withdrawn. People in this country have actually lost out on mortgages that they had been told they would have. Do you honestly think this was the right course of action? Well, again, it, 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 when you say huge shock, over the summer she was very clear that she, was, that she believed that her strategy was to reduce taxes. She and Rishi Sunak argued that out over the summer. He said one thing, she said the other. But it shouldn't come as a shock to anyone when she said she believed the strategy was to be more of a sort of Asian tiger economy strategy where you keep, you keep your higher spending, but you grow your economy. And she said to do that, she would be cutting taxes. It, I mean, it was to anyone paying any attention to that leadership contest it was plain as day what was going to happen now we, we due to putin's illegal war we know that we have high energy costs we know there's been restriction on supply of oil and gas and as and the net result of that is we've had to take interventions and react i don't think anybody doubts that but that what, has been what? inflationary but laura just to be clear that has been inflationary and irrespective of uh, a small cut, proposed cut in, you know, cut in tax in terms of the overall picture. The big, the big response is the energy response. 
irrespective of that, we were going to see mortgage costs will go up and interest rates go up. They already have been going up. It's the way that, that, that the energy costs... Inflation. But this and is that the... inflation has been brought forward by Putin's illegal war. We know that. I mean, it's, and it's no different to the yen, the euro, the pound, all bar the dollar, all currencies around the world are under pressure on this. They are, but the pound is, is tanking. The Treasury... Treasury Select Committee well, said... Actually, and you know, BBC, this is BBC taking it through. The pound has recovered. It, it, it by dropped about two cents. And we're now told the euro is about to come under pressure because Germany today have brought forward a £200 billion uh, version of their defensive shield and energy prices. And that £200 billion response, we're told, is going to see the euro come under some pressure. That is inevitable. Well, let's trying talk, to help let's with talk about costs. the impact that this has had on the UK economy. And especially with this decision around the OBR, the Treasury Select Committee said that the lack of this forecast before the mini-budget has in some part driven the lack of confidence in the market. The Conservative MP from your party, Mel Stride, who chairs yes. that cross-party committee, said that the lack of OBR forecast had left some people with the impression the government was trying to avoid scrutiny. And if we'd waited 8 to 12 weeks for an OBR report to be produced, not a draft report we would be waiting 8 to 12 weeks before we help people with their energy costs. Do you... I mean, we, we, had to, we wanted to... And the Chancellor made that clear to Mel Stride in his answer to him from the dispatch box at the House of Commons. Do you honestly he, feel Mel like Stride, this is a good week for your the, government? I was the bench at the time. Mel Stride made that observation and the Chancellor responded and said, we, we committed to crack on and help people and we've, we, we're doing it. The markets are responding entirely to the we that the UK government is handling this situation. Rishi, Rishi Sunak warned that this would happen. Would he not have made a better yes, leader and, for and your I've party? Said to you that in, the, the, initially, we saw we saw the drop against the dollar. To a, 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 it went down to a dollar and uh, threepence, and now it's, it's it's increased four points. What, what uh, about we, interest rates? Against, what about uh, people who've lost their the euro? Well, Mr. I'm, Jack, I'm what about interest of, rates having to be put up so suddenly this week? People have lost out on mortgages. But inter, people in, who the, are trying to buy houses. Rate, no, 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 no. You're conflating two things. The interest rate increase that, that the Bank of England brought forward was in response to inflation and it was something they'd been planning over the, the previous month. So it... it, it it was not that that is absolutely in response to in, increasing inflation inflation as we know is across europe hitting what what 10%. about the bank of england having to buy government bonds to prevent the collapse of pension funds well so the bank of england the bank of england have stepped in with that support and they've done that in 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 agreement in daily discussion with the chancellor because markets the markets reacted as you as as you've pointed out markets react we can't control markets but what we can but do they're responding is, to what your government's doing well but but so so what we are doing is is step, stepping up to help people with their energy costs this winter i make no apology for that it is a huge intervention greater than our covid intervention on furlough and, and that is a, a massive amount of money. Now, the next step we have to do is sort out our supply side, reform our oil and gas domestic prices, our energy costs, and then do the other things that grow the economy, like bring forward investment zones. We're going to announce two free ports for Scotland shortly. I'm hoping we'll have investment zones as well in Scotland. We're working with the Scottish Government to do that. And we have to grow the economy, because as I said at the head of this bulletin, 1% growth in the economy is £47 billion of extra money coming into the Treasury. And we need to grow our way out of this problem. We need to grow... To, I just to, mentioned to you, the economy did inflation. actually grow in the three months to June. We've just learned this morning it grew by 0.2%. Well, but, but, they, but let's go back. Over the last decade, economic growth has been very slow in Europe compared to other parts of the world. We want to see economic growth, and we don't believe high tax, high spend is the way to achieve it. So we, we want to encourage economic growth, we want to encourage inward investment, we want to keep corporation tax at 19% rather than move it up to 25% because we know we're competing, for instance, with, with uh, Dublin, where corporation tax is 12.5%. It's not a surprise that companies like Google base themselves there. We want those jobs to come to the United Kingdom so we grow our economy. The latest polls are grim for your party. One suggesting, the YouGov poll yesterday, suggesting Labour have a 33% lead. Is this the beginning of the end for this Conservative government? And does Liz Truss know that in taking this gamble? So 
I, on opinion polls, I always give the same answer, which is the opinion poll that matters is when is when people go to the polls and cast their vote. And we've seen opinion polls sway backwards and forwards. And we've seen, and, and while I've been in this role, I've seen them I've seen them move around dramatically, very dramatically. I think 42 percent. Uh, in favour of separation in the Scot in, in the, of the United breaking Scotland away from the United Kingdom, as opposed to 58 percent in December 2019. So a huge so, change. So you're there. quite happy now to continue see, to be associated see, with this Conservative seeing, government. I, I, no, 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 no. I, as I say, I, opinion polls are a snapshot of the mood of the country at the time. Uh, I, I, I prefer to look at the longer trends, okay. and, but the one that really matters is when we, people go to the ballot box. We're right out of time. We're right out of time. Will the Prime Minister and the well, Chancellor continue on this course of action? Well, the, so the, there will be further steps taken. The, as, 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 the, as the Chancellor said, this is stage one. There's, there are other stages to come, but the plan is absolutely to grow the economy to help people with their livelihoods and their incomes. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Secretary of State for Scotland, Alistair Jack.